Ah, hello there. Good morning. Lovely to see you. How are you today? Excellent. Good. I'm really pleased to see you. This is Keith um, from the Keith Speaking Academy and we're having our live lesson today. Apologies, I had to postpone last week, um, but we're live here today in a new setting. I have a new office space. Um, so this is where we'll be doing the live lessons. And today we've got this exciting topic of cities, which will be really useful to talk about cities that you've been to, that you would like to visit, or even your hometown, right? Excellent, very, very nice. So we're gonna talk about cities. We've got some vocabulary. We've got some, we're gonna talk about the location, about interesting things you can do in cities, everything you can imagine. We're even gonna have a visualization today. So listen, let's get straight in there and start with a little bit of this. Hello, good morning, and it's nice to see you. Um, if you don't know me, my, my name is Keith from the Keith Speaking Academy, um, and I have the website, well, that's not the website, that's the email address. We've got the Keith Speaking Academy. It's a website full of resources and ideas to help you with your IELTS speaking, but also there's lots of stuff there just to help with your general English. Now then, I got something very interesting the other day, right? I got this right it's a letter we don't often get letters these days and i was delighted and i opened it up and it was a handwritten letter this was a special letter for two reasons the first is it came from violeta or violeta from lithuania who's moved to england and uh, she said she wanted to tell me about the life-changing online course ielts speaking success get a band seven plus and she goes on to describe how it's helped her so much with her English and living in England, building her confidence and passing. She did the Duolingo test, actually. Um, so she just wanted to say thank you. And I just want to say thank you to you, Violetta. That was absolutely brilliant. The second reason this letter was special is because I know she sent it once and it got lost. And I sent her a different address and she sent it again. So she must have written the letter a second time incredibly valuable. I am going to cherish that with your letter because not very often do we get handwritten letters. So thank you so much. Um, I also got a very interesting note the other day from, where is it? Over here. It was a, uh, oh, I can't find it. Yes, it was from Eunice, Eunice Nag Nadunga. And I want to say thank you very much as well for this comment, uh, Eunice. And she sent over an email saying, thank you very much for the golden pack. She's referring to the gold course, which is this one over here. Um, she took the course and she said, I passed my IELTS exams with the band seven overall and the band eight in speaking. I just can't thank you enough. I'm thrilled to bits. Eunice, I am thrilled that you got that in the test. And eight is really difficult on speaking. So well, well done to you. Um, delighted to, to help you with that in a little bit in my own way. So let's see who is in the house today. Say hello to James Rijal. Hello, everybody. Cherry and Sarmiento. Right, good. Nice to see you. Angelica from Germany. Lovely. Gia Rajaswari Kanan. Hello. Everyday Advanced English. <laughs> hello. Uh, Mohsen from Iran. Lovely. Um, Con Henry, nice to see you. Uh, and Con says Eid Mubarak. So Eid Mubarak to all of the um, people who are celebrating the Eid al Araf this weekend or these days. Um, I know it's a really important festival for the Muslims. So um, Eid Mubarak to all of you. Enjoy the festival. Hope it brings you closer to your spirituality. Good. Hello to Tejaswini from India. Lovely to see you. Mary L from the Congo. How nice to see you here as well. And Zora Rosan 
from Paris. Ah, oh, lucky you. Now, Paris, that's interesting, right? Because it's a city I've been to many times and it's a city I love. And today we're going to be talking about cities. So in fact, what I'm going to do, apart from shaking, <laughs> is let's just have a look at what we're going to be studying. I say studying, enjoying, learning today, right? In today's class. So the topic is cities. That's what we're going to do at the very, very start. Um, I'm going to talk about location, right? So how you describe where your hometown is, um, where different cities are, looking at how to use prepositions, right, for this. Um, we'll then be looking at different attractions. So within a city, like the sites that you see, um, the attractions that people want to go to, whether it's museums or beaches and so on and so forth. We'll then be looking at, well, urbanization. Now, this is a word you should know. Urban means city. Urbanization is this movement of people from the countryside into the city and how that has changed our cities. It's such an important topic. You need to know the vocabulary around this. So urbanization, zation, nice. Urbanization is a big topic. You should not only learn the language, but also get some ideas, right? And we'll be doing that today. Um, I'll be taking a poll with you. Not a poll to hit you, a poll as in a survey. <laughs> okay. Um, also, we'll be looking at the pros and cons, right? What are the pros and cons of living in a city as opposed to the countryside? So we'll have a look at that, the pros and the cons. And we'll then be doing this. I've decided, <laughs> what's that, Keith? I'm going to do a visualization. Now, I did visualizations, oh, a long time ago, about a year ago, and they seem to be quite popular. And it's a way for you to absorb the language, but it's a bit like a meditation. It's a time to relax because studying for IELTS can be quite stressful, all right? I know. And um, the visualization is a way that you just close your eyes, you relax, we look at the language, you hear things and I take you on a visualized tour. It will make sense, trust me, right, when we get there. Um, and then we're gonna finish up on the game. We've got a game of Kahoot today, 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 today. So make sure you're paying attention. No napping, no sleeping, no kipping, right? I want you awake, making notes, because I will be testing you at the very end with the Kahoot game to see if you remember. All right. Today's lesson will take about an hour and an hour and a half, as usual. Um, I know it's quite long, so if you need to go to the toilet, go anytime. If you need a break, have a break, come back. And if you need to leave early, hey, life happens. You can always come back and watch the recording because this is recorded. You can get it on YouTube or the Facebook page or group and uh, keep watching it there. OK, so that is what we've got in store today. Lovely. If you've just joined us, today's topic, by the way, cities. OK, let me check in with you guys, see how you're doing. Um, there's that visualisation. Ah, yes, but you're looking at the American spelling as opposed to the British spelling. Han Huang from Vietnam. Nice to see you. Uh, Noah Ginto. Yeah, people trafficking. Big problem. Absolutely. Um, Asif Hussain, Eid Mubarak from Bangladesh. Great to see guys from Bangladesh here today. Burns, hello. In, in case you're wondering, Burns will be posting now and again. She's on the Facebook um, page, I think. Yes, the Facebook page. Um, and she um, helps me out. We've got actually, so if you see messages from Mehdi, Burns, Paula, um, then they are the guys who are helping out moderating um, the chat as we go. All right, excellent. Good to see you all here. First time for some people, I can see. If it is your first time, like Lorenzi Bonsu from Ghana, if it is your first time, welcome. Pen and paper, make notes, enjoy. You're going to learn a lot today. I hope so, at least. Okay, so let's get straight in. Let's start. We're going to talk about introducing cities, talking about cities. Okay, so let me bring us in. Now, introducing a city, come down a bit, you may want to talk about the location, interesting places and the advantages of that city. So we're going to be doing all of that today, right? Um, we're going to be looking at all of these different things. 
Um, I'm going to begin with a little quiz for you. I'm going to show you some pictures and can you guess which city this is? <laughs> or the question, which city is this? Okay, can you guess which city this is? Let me show you, right? I'm going to show you some pictures. The first one is quite hard because it's a very, very general picture. I mean, this could be any city in the world, but let's see. Okay, which city do you think this is? Hello, Samantha from South America. Gia in Hanoi. Oliver in Vietnam. Cherry. You said Hong Kong. Right, we've got some interesting ideas. Um, let's share these. Hong Kong. It could be, right? Singapore. It looks kind of, yeah, like those cities. Venice. Right, Maria. Good guess because of the canal. It is a canal. Brian says the UK. It does look a bit um, British. <laughs> Gia says it looks dirty. Oi, come on. Tash Tashkent. Could be, possibly. Another one for Venice because of the canals, I'm guessing. Solis, you interesting. London, right? Okay, um, some good guesses. Let me show you the next picture. Okay, this is the same city. It's the same city. Which city is it? So, Simon says uh, da, 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 Amsterdam. Sivella says Italy, maybe? Alexander Santander, good guess, because you know I live in Santander, but it's not actually. Baku, could be. Azerbaijan, could be. Hamburg, it has that Germanic feel, I agree. Netherlands, Philippines, because, well, yes, there are quite a few churches, right? It could be mm, China, I'm not sure. It could be, maybe. Some people are still going with Venice. Iran, interesting. We've got in Milan, it says London. It looks a bit Londonish, right? We've got a lot of people saying London, London, London. <laughs> Quite a few are still going for Italy. So, London or Italy, we've got a few. Um, Epic says, I'm sure it's London. Oh, putting your neck on the line. It does look a bit like Amsterdam. I agree to an extent. So, the final picture. It's the same city, and this should help a little bit. Look carefully. <laughs> I look at it this. Is London a city? Yes, Kenneth, of course London is a city. Fahim said Tower Bridge earlier. Mm. So we're still people going for London. We've, people have jumped to Denmark. Sama says Dama. Donna says somewhere in Europe. Hmm. This is interesting. Um, Aitan says he's going for London. Takes a bit too long, yes. London, a lot of London. Someone's gone for Turkey. Interesting. It does have that German feel. Ah, Brian. Very interesting. Now, if you look closely at the picture on the left, that should help you. Uh, we've got quite a few. Nessie says Bruges. It looks a bit like Belgium. I do agree. Nice, 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 nice. Liverpool. Come on, my friend. Seriously? <laughs> it could be Liverpool. Gultzaz says Manchester. OK, if you look kind of at that picture on the left, it says Manchester's gay village. It is indeed. And here's the final clue. If you weren't sure, here is the final clue to that city. It has to be Manchester, right? It is Manchester. Indeed, it is. There it is, Manchester. Um, this is the Etihad. It's the Manchester City Stadium. So if you're a football fan, you'll recognise that instantly. Um, the Sadi says Manchester. Excellent. We've got quite a few. Joe also. You've got Manchester. You've got it. Yay. You were right, Cherry. It is Manchester indeed. Brilliant. Hey, Jordan. Nice to see you here. Annoying park zones only in England. Oh, that's true. Yes. Lovely. Thanks for joining, Jordan. 
Excellent. So as Princess Shell says, it's nice to have a princess here. Um, Manchester is the city. Lovely. There we go. So talking about Manchester, right, let's switch back to here. We're talking about location. So location, if we want to describe where something is, let me show you Google Maps. I love Google Maps, right? I'm a big, big fan. If we go to Google Maps, right, you're going to see I'm going to show you this. Um, it takes you here. You can click on this if you want to see it as well. And gosh, find my way around my own computer. So the city we've looked at there, right, was Manchester. Um, and Manchester is in England. OK, the great thing about Google Maps is if you click on the, this country, let's click on Wales, right, it shows you the border of Wales, right? Great. If you're not sure, you know, what's the border of Scotland? You just click on Scotland. Where is it? Up here. And it shows you in red, right, the border of where Scotland is. So Manchester, as you can see, right, is in, in England. It's in the north of England. Um, so we use in because it's in a space. The space is England or the north of England, so it's in the north of England. However, we can say also Manchester is north of London or Manchester is located to the north of London. To the north means in the direction right of. Okay. Let me show this a little more clearly, maybe just on these pictures, right? If I say Manchester is in the north, it's in the space, right? In the north of England. Manchester is to the north of London. So it's a direction to, right? That to is normally a direction. It's to the north of London. Um, we can also say, for example, um, it's on the coast. Actually, Manchester is not on the coast. Liverpool is on the coast. So the coast is where the sea is. It's the, the border there. And we say on the border, on the coast. OK. Let me come back and show you that in words. So Manchester's located in the north of England, so it's in the space. So the north of England is the space, okay? That's basically why we use in. Um, it's located to the north of London. So that's a direction, right? It's from London to Manchester. So Manchester is located to the north of London. Other ways we can express this, we can also say instead of located, which is a little bit formal, it's probably a bit more informal to say it can be found in the south of India, not Manchester, obviously, um, but maybe Madras, for example, right? Madras can be found in the south of India um, or it can be found to the south of New Delhi. Again, right? Direction. So it can be found is nice, very colloquial, very nice informal way of saying it. Um, and the last one was it can be found on the south coast. So we say on the coast, on the border, on the border of France and Belgium, on the coast, on the south coast or the, the north coast. OK, other ways we can talk about location. We can also have it's a two hour drive from London. So talking about Manchester, it's a two hour drive. Notice that here there is no S because it's an adjective and of course in English adjectives do not agree <laughs> I disagree what <laughs> that with there's no s so it's a two-hour drive even though it's two a two-hour drive from London or even more naturally it's about three hours on the train from London so here we're using from right Madras is about 10 hours on the train from New Delhi. Is it? I'm guessing, maybe. 
But there you go. There's an example. I remember once we were in Vietnam and in Vietnam we went from Hanoi all the way down to um, Ho Chi Minh City and it was about <laughs> it was about 12 hours on the bus from Hanoi to Ho Chi Minh City. It was an overnight bus and we slept overnight. So it's about 12 hours on the bus from Hanoi, for example. Right. Lovely. Location. That's it. Easy, I think. Right. Good. Gia says, let me bring you down a bit. Hanoi is located in the north of Vietnam. Fantastic. Fantastic. Good. We've got some good examples. Manchester is nearby Liverpool to the north of London. Perfect. Bangalore is in the south of India. Perfect. My city is situated on the bank of the Vishma, v, v, Vishvamitra. Perfect. Nice. A few people are asking the difference of coast and beach. Okay, so the coast is is a geographic oh what's the word it's a geographic form basically so the coast is where the land meets the sea so the beach is the sand so when we talk about the beach beaches are very very small right so typically a beach might be half a mile or one mile but the coast is the whole area the coast is miles and miles, hundreds of miles. So the coast is bigger, the beach is smaller. And the beach, we're thinking about the sand, really, whereas the coast is sand, it can be cliffs, it can be fields, it can be rock, anything. But the beach is sand, unless you're lucky enough to live in Blackpool, where it's stones and pebbles. <laughs> Great question, nice, good. Okay, um, brilliant, good. I'm gonna do one little check here. Lille is located to the north of France. Ah, now then, remember two is direction. So that means Lille is in England, right? You can see the problem here. Irma Linda. I'm going to correct it because I think it's a great example to show everybody. If we say Lille is located to the north of France, it must be in England. Hooray, we've stolen Lille. <laughs> but it's not. Um, Lille is located in the north of France, right? It's a simple mistake. Don't worry. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's really, really nice. Do you know I used to live in Lille? I spent a year in Lille when I was at university because I was studying French. Um, yeah, we went to the college in Roubaix uh, near Tourcoing. And then, yeah, Lille was where we lived. It was great. Great. C'est Mambo. Thanks for the tips. I scored 7.5 in my speaking. Well done. Hey, congratulations. Let's give you a... Uh, have I still got the tingle? Yes. Can you hear that? My sound effects. Let's try again. Excellent. Great. H. Dubai can be found on the south coast of the Middle East for some reason. I don't know why. I think it's because it's a specific Middle East. We're talking about a specific area. We say the Middle East. Okay. The Middle East. Excellent. Okay. Thanks for all of those. Let's move on from location. Let's talk about interesting places. Ooh, where are we? So we want to talk about interesting places in cities, right? One of the most common ways is to say it's famous for, notice, famous for its temples, right? Um, you could say, let's see, maybe Hanoi is famous for its temples, um, Taiwan is famous for its temples. London is famous for its museums. Um, Paris and Madrid are famous for their art galleries or beaches or mountains. So famous for? Easy. Um, just notice, right, instead of saying famous 
for, I mean, we do say it's famous for, but when we're speaking, the for becomes f. It's famous f. And then you stress the next thing. So let's say Santander beaches. Santander is famous for its beaches. Fritz, Fritz, right? For its Fritz. Can you say that? Fritz. Santander is famous for its beaches. Right, great. Um, Dubai is famous for its architecture. Fritz architecture. Paris is famous for its cafes. Nice, Fritz. Pronunciation, just to practice getting it slightly more natural. Very, very, very nice. Okay, famous for. You can also say places worth visiting, right? Slightly more sophisticated vocabulary. It's worth visiting. Places worth visiting include the temples, the museums. Um, if we're talking about Manchester, places worth visiting include the Etihad Football Stadium, Old Trafford Football Stadium, <laughs> football, football, um, maybe the canal area, um, the shopping malls, and so on. Other expressions, tourists tend to flock to. Now, to flock is normally used with birds, right? I'm going to do an impression of a bird. <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> um, so as the birds go together, they flock. So imagine this is um, metaphorical, right? The tourists are like birds and they flock they flock together. They go in crowds to the area. So tourists tend to flock to um, the beaches, right? In Santander, tourists tend to flock to the beaches. I wonder where people flock to in your city. Let me know. <laughs> We've got a few examples coming up. Florence is famous for its fine art, architecture and museums. Very, very nice. <laughs> Can I share this? Layla, thank you. This is very funny, but it's great. I think people who were born in Manchester are very intelligent. Uh, great. Ah. Okay, Lviv is famous for, right? You're just missing the for, for its coffee. I'm going to help you here. for its coffee and strudel. Lovely. Whoops. Yes, you're right. Somebody. Tu. Famous for it or famous for. Exactly. It's with the, it's without the apostrophe. Thank you very much. I just noticed that. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Ami says, tourists tend to flock to Shani Varavadi, Poon, India. Lovely. Very, very nice. In Taiwan, tourists tend to flock to the night markets. Yes. So we would say here to the night markets because you're referring to a specific area or a specific place, right? The night markets. They are famous, right? When coming to Hanoi, tourists tend to flock to Hoon Kem Lake. Lovely. Nice. How does London is famous for its Tower Bridge? Yes, it's perfect. That's great. Excellent. Good. Let's keep going on. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I realise it's so hot up here in Spain at the moment. Um, and in this place, there's no, <laughs> there's no air conditioning. I'm going to have to open the window, which may mean the sound might change, but I think we'll be OK. Bear with me. I wonder if that affects the sound. I can hear the birds. Hmm. Okay. We can also say the places that attract most visitors are the lakes, the temples, the cinemas, or the visitors are drawn by the amazing views. This is a really nice expression, right? So we're talking about the verb to draw, which has 
well, many different meanings, right? To draw can be literally with a pen where you draw a picture, but to draw can be to pull, right? So I can draw you in to the video, I can pull you in, um, and a famous attraction can draw the tourists, it can pull the tourists in. So here we're talking about pull or attract. Visitors are drawn by the amazing views. Um, in the north of England, visitors are drawn by the lakes and the mountains. In Manchester, visitors are drawn by the football culture. Things like that. One more we've got is the old quarter, the river or the nightlife is a big pull factor. Now, this is not the X factor, it's a big pull factor. So a pull factor, like draw, right, to pull people in. Again, ASMR, I keep reverting. I should maybe <laughs> start an ASMR channel. A big pull factor. So to pull people in is this idea, and you can say anything, like the beaches are a big pull factor. Um, in, I don't know, in maybe, I'm trying to think, what would it be? Maybe in Turkey, the bazaars and the markets are a big pull factor. Things like that. Okay, great. So these are all nice expressions. A lot of these, as you see, are idiomatic. To flock, drawn, a big pull factor. They're, they're metaphorical or idiomatic rather than literally meaning that. Okay, let's check in with you, see how you're doing. Layla says, tourists tend to flock to historical buildings and museums in my city. Very, very nice. Tourists tend to flock to Boracay Beach. Right, Boracay Beach. I don't know that one. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know that one, but great. Just remember to flock to because it's to go to somewhere, right? To flock to. Amandeep Heritage Buildings are the pull factor here. Lovely. Very, very nice. Uh, Ahmed says visitors are drawn by the amazing marsh. Interesting. I wonder where you're talking about. Um, yeah, nice, Ismail. Tourists come in droves. Ah, in droves, right? To see the White House. This is a nice expression, to come in droves to see the White House. Um, lovely. Very, very nice. Ali, tourists tend to flock to nibble at the food trucks or at food trucks. You know what? That was true. I don't know where you are, Ali, but um, when I was in Kuala Lumpur, downstairs from where we lived, there was a big food truck park and tourists and locals tended to flock to, to nibble at the food trucks, not at the food trucks, to nibble the food in the food trucks. They're not nibbling the food truck. But yes, it's correct. Nibble at the food trucks, right? <laughs> it has a double meaning, but it's correct. Nor says, sorry, sir, please don't be sorry. Which country you leave? Oh, right. Well, the country I left was England, but the country where I live, I think you mean live, is Santander. It's not a country, Spain. I live in Spain, which is why it's so hot. Yes. <laughs> Okay, excellent. Let's move on. The sound is fine. Oh, great. Good, because I'm cooler now. Thank you. Um, Mam Channel, nice to see you here. Tourists tend to flock to the Bagan archaeological site in Myanmar. Lovely. When you say dollar signs, you mean the, the there's a big tourist trade there, right? They're making money from it. Trang Quoc Pagoda is a big pull factor in Vietnam. Excellent. It is. It's a beautiful pagoda. I've seen it. It's very, very nice. Yes. Geraldine, visitors tend to flock to the football culture. Lovely. <laughs> okay, got you. Let's move on. Some lovely expressions there. You can carry on practicing. Um, I'm just going to leave you with a, a little tip, right? And, and this is the following. In IELTS, if you're preparing for IELTS, right? In IELTS speaking, when you're talking about attractions, you don't want to give a list of different sites, right? Don't say, 
Well, if you come to Manchester, um, the big pull factors are the football stadium, the shopping mall, the cathedral, there's the canal, and then there's the, the old Roman bridge. And then, right? Blah. No, don't give a list because it sounds like you've just memorized something. Just choose one or maybe two and then go into detail because in the detail is where you show your flexibility, you show your language, you show vocabulary. It's about the detail, right? Not the quantity. So it's really true. It's all about the quality, not the quantity, right? So that's a tip for IELTS speaking. Um, quick question here. Can we use the verb galvanize instead of attract? Not in this context, no. Definitely not in this context. It's not, not appropriate. Um, no. Right, Daily Moore, well done, 6.5. Good for you. Congratulations. Right, excellent. I'm just checking in. There's so many comments. Very, very nice. Listen, I'm going to move us on. Um, oh, I've just got one more, which is if you could only do one thing in such a city, I would recommend going to the Tate Gallery. And I, yeah, I just want to point out that because a lot of students, when they say, oh, yes, I would recommend go to, remember, recommend goes with the gerund. I recommend going to the Tate Gallery or I recommend visiting, I-N-G, the Tate Gallery, right? If you could only do one thing in Manchester, I would recommend going to Old Trafford. I wonder what you would recommend in your city, right? Let's have a look. Joy Nal, more Bangladeshi, you're a big fan. Thank you very much, lovely. Dorna, not so good, but don't worry, you're just in time for lots of more interesting stuff. Fernando, first time in the chat. Lovely to see you here. Very, very nice. Great. Ever, um, 7.5 after watching your videos. Well done. Let's find that little applause button for you, Eva. Uh, great. Um, here's an interesting question. I've lost you. How can we expand our ideas in IELTS speaking? Shweta, what a very good question. Um, ooh, there are many ways to do it. I think the key thing, right, is, is, is what I said is you get the main idea and then you go into details, right? So I think a lot of people in IELTS speaking, they get blocked with the idea. So here's an example, right? Let, let me give you an example. Somebody says, um, tell me about your city. Okay, I'm from Santander and a big pull factor are the beaches. And then I'm blocked. What, what do I say? expand so give details so take the beach and start thinking about what you can say i come from santander a big pull factor um are the beaches because the golden sand is lovely and soft and nice to sit on there are lots of really nice um coffee cafe bars and ice cream parlors nearby Lots of water activities are organized on the beach. So there are different companies, expand, different companies who um, organize different activities such as water skiing and paragliding, and they're great fun to do on the beach. Blah, 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 right? So you're taking the idea of the beach and then just pick out some details. There's the ice cream parlors, there's the water activities. And then you can even branch off more and more. So the secret is not lots of ideas. It's one idea and then start to branch out to pick out some details. I think that's the way to develop your ideas, right? Great question, Shveta. Very, very good. On that note, let us move on and talk about the urbanization of cities. I'm just going to switch us for a moment um, to kind of put us into place where we are. So just to recap, we've been talking about cities so far, right? Um, we've had a look at location, 
talking about it's to the north of London, it's in the south of England. Um, we've talked about attractions and things like people flocking to the attractions, or a big pull factor is uh, the the cathedral, or a big pull factor are the beaches. Talked about attractions. Um, next up, then urbanization. And I'm thinking particularly in IELTS speaking part three here, where you're asked broader, wider questions about cities, city life, right? Urbanization is a key concept. So let's have a look at this idea. Maybe we'll get the idea and we'll start to branch out on different details we can talk about. Okay. Where are we? Where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? <laughs> Urbanization of cities. <clears throat> so how have cities changed in recent years? I mean, that, that's a common question, right, that comes up. And of course, the answer is urbanization. Um, many, many cities have gone through a phase of urbanization. More and more people are coming in. And now we can say, for example, many new buildings have sprung up many new buildings have cropped up. Both of these mean to appear. Appear is great, but to spring, boing, is idiomatic, and to crop, like the flowers or the fruit and vegetables crop, right, they're the crops, to crop up, just, it's more idiomatic, it's nice language to use. I remember, gosh, years ago, um, I... When was it I moved to Beijing, right? I moved to Beijing in 2002. Um, and then I left. And then I went back, oh, like 15 years later. And the skyline of the city had totally changed. New buildings had cropped up left, right and centre. The CBD, the Central Business District, was just, there were just skyscrapers had sprung up all over the place. It was an incredible change. The pace of change in the Chinese cities is huge. The urbanization, I think, is having a big impact on the skyline of the city, right? The, the skyline is the, what you can see across the city and the lifestyle. So spring up and to crop up, right? I've used the present perfect, so be careful with here, you need the past participle, have sprung up, or have cropped up, cropped up. It's a p t p, cropped up. Can you say that? Cropped up. Have cropped up. Many buildings have cropped up. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. We can also say there has been an influx of citizens into cities. You could say people. You can say citizens. The nice word here is influx. So the idea of in, going in, people going in. You've got an influx just means a flow of something, a flow of people or a flow of, I don't know, other things. <laughs> but here particularly, we use this word to talk about the flow of people into cities. There's been an influx of people or there's been an influx of citizens into the cities or cities. OK, so nice. Um, we can continue to talk about the impacts, right, of urbanization. Increased urbanization has led to a higher cost of living. Higher cost of living is how much you pay for things, like how much you pay on rent, on food, on parking, on eating out. Cost of living is rocketing, right? Nowadays, more than ever before, cost of living has just rocketed up to the sky. But also, of course, increased urbanization has led to a higher cost of living. More people, more demand. Higher demand, higher prices. <laughs> Basic rule of economics, right? Okay, excellent, good. 
Let me just check in. Selma. Lovely. I like that. Pleased as punch to be here. I love that expression. Thank you very much for joining us. Abdullah Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak to you too and all of you who are celebrating. Ahmed. Branch out. It's a nice phrase. I agree. Nice phrasal verb, right? Take your idea, then branch out onto different ideas. Well spotted, Ahmed. I'm glad you noticed that. Um, just feel alive says a lot of sky skycrappers skyscrapers excuse me sorry I'm laughing because the pronunciation is quite funny sky scrapers have cropped up I know I know what's happening here is you're typing so fast you're making some mistakes right but don't worry excellent a lot of skyscrapers have cropped up especially in Chinese cities. Very, very nice. Good. Um, where else have we got? Parisa. <laughs> Some cities are bulging at the seams. Oh, lovely. Very nice. So bulging literally is you're bursting. The seam is the here on your shirt or on your material where you join the material, right? When you sew, so your seam goes down your shirt or it goes down here and um, if you're so fat you'll be bursting at the seams but that's a lovely metaphor right the cities are bul bulging at the seams or bursting at the seams lovely metaphor i like that very much Par uh, parisa thank you very much maria says we are living in the era of rapid urbanization yes good uh, urbanization can be with a Z if it's the American spelling or the S if it's the British spelling. Of course, when you speak, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Lynn, crop up or pop up? Both is the answer, Lynn. Both. Mikola, well, welcome. It's tr it is true that a lot of new buildings are cropping up in... Livano Frankivsk city. Nice. Lovely. Thank you very, very much. I'm just going to change your truth to true, right? Here you want the adjective rather than the noun. Great. Um, here we've got, there have been an influx of tourists flocking to Natrang. That's true. I went to Natrang. Right. So here, just to point out and to help you and others, right? Because it's an influx and you'll notice my example just above you there has been i know what you're thinking have been a lot of people but because it's influx is singular there has been an influx of tourists right just be careful with the grammar on the on the nouns there but lovely lovely example thank you so much creativity i love your lessons sir i love your examples dear students <laughs> great um, great, we've got a comment here from uh, Ahmed Naji, excuse me. In fact, growing industries rapidly caused greenhouse emissions. That's right, growing industries have rapidly caused greenhouse emissions. Excellent, good. In Vietnam, many high rise flats and shopping outlets have cropped up. Lovely. We have quite a few Vietnamese students here today, I've noticed. Great. <laughs> Samira, this is so kind. Can't stop listening to you. You have out of ordinary positive karma. <laughs> Thank you so much. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. A lifestyle vlog. I love to join your class. Love. I'm pleased you're here. Thank you. I'm going to check out your vlog later. <laughs> okay, let's carry on. We're talking about urbanization. There's a, a couple of other things here we can say. Um, for example, there are more recreational facilities. So recreational is a nice word. Recreational means entertainment. So things like your cinemas, your parks, um, your bowling alleys, restaurants. There are more recreational facilities and amenities. Facilities are kind of the place, the building. The amenities are the other things inside, right? Like the bowling alley or the food or the, the more particular things. But that's the collocation. Facilities and amenities often go together as a collocation. 
However, of course, there is always going to be a downside. And one of the downsides is more and more shanty towns and slums have appeared. Um, and you can see this in particular in, I don't know, I mean, certain big cities. I mean, we're talking about really big, these mega cities. You can see this in some mega cities in China. You can see this in Brazil. I think in some of the mega cities in Brazil that you've got these slums or shanty towns. So a shanty town is an area that has been built up around a city, but the buildings are very, very... Uh, they're kind of like handmade buildings. So they're not brick and cement. They're just made with cardboard or plastic or uh, this iron, corrugated iron. And it's just very, very basic. Often no water, no heating, no sanitization, no cleanliness. They just become, it's a very poor and dirty area around a city. That's the basic thing, right? A slum. So this can be one of the downsides of the uh, urbanization. Okay. Lovely. So lots of things there. We've talked about urbanization. Okay. Um, let me switch just for a moment. I've got no idea what time it is. Okay. I think we're doing okay. I'm going to switch from urbanization and let's move over and have a look at pros and cons. Cha cha. <clears throat> Lovely. I like to do that because it gives me a chance for me to drink my tea without you seeing. But now you've seen. Pros and cons. Let's talk about the pros and cons, okay? So I'm going to do a poll with you or a survey, okay? So let's go and together, let's have a look at <laughs> here. Advantages of living in a city. Guys, if the um, our moderators, if Burns, Medi and uh, Paula, you could share this link, okay, uh, to www.menti.com. If you could share this link in the chat. And basically, we're going to look at the advantages of living in a city. I want you to tell me there are five options. Which one is the biggest advantage of living in that city? OK, so let me go here myself. I hope I've got the right link. I'll soon find out. Yeah, so you're going to see um, when you go here, you're going to see this, right? Mentimeter, what are the advantages of living in a city? And um, basically, I want you to just put in your answer. If you think it's reliable public transport and then just press submit and then that's it, right? And that's all you need to do. And then come back to me. <laughs> come back to the screen and we'll look at the answers together. OK. So let me get the answers first. Dun, 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 dun. Bear with me, my friends. Bear with me. Okay, still keep bearing with me. Okay, we're coming in. Here are the answers. Coming in, this is what we've got so far. I'll make that a bit smaller, right? What are the advantages of living in a city? So, access to culture, very, very low. Wow, look at that. 67 and growing better job opportunities. Behind that is better quality schooling at 15. We've got 10 reliable public transport. It does help, right? Getting to work as well. But interestingly, access to culture. So your museums, your theatres, etc. Not very high. And shopping. What? Nobody likes shopping. <laughs> but of course, I've asked you to prioritise, right? What are the advantages? Which is the most important one? And because you can only vote once, that looks very clear, right? Job opportunities seem to be the most important. Very, very interesting. Good. Listen, I'm going to give you a moment while I just have some, some tea. And let me put in some nice um, funk for you. Not 
too loud though. Right, lovely, good. Let's take that away. I mean, take the music away. So there we go. We've got the, the advantages. Clearly, better job opportunities is the number one reason that people are moving into the cities. Amazing, right? Very, very interesting. It doesn't surprise me at all, actually. Now, one thing here, we talked earlier about the ideas. So here, when we talk about the advantages of a city, we're getting the ideas. In addition to collecting your ideas, look at collocations. Some of you noticed earlier, somebody noticed the collocation of branch out, um, or that's a phrasal verb as well, right? But collocations are the essence of English and language, of most languages, right? It's the words that go together. And this is where you build your fluency. Instead of learning one word, you try and learn the word that goes together, right? The two or three words that go together. So when we talk about jobs, people say, well, what's the advantage of living in a city? Well, more jobs, more jobs, jobs. How about job opportunity? That's a collocation. More job opportunities. Ah, that's better. Better job opportunities. Good, right? Transport. Transport, yeah. Well, quality transport. Ah, that's a collocation. Or reliable transport, right? That's your collocation. This is where you're putting your words together. It helps you become more fluent because you're not thinking word by word. You're thinking chunk by chunk. Chunk is the piece of language. The collocation is a chunk as well. OK, so focus on the collocations and you can see this very quickly here. Right. We've talked we're talking about advantages of living in a city. The most popular was better job opportunities. That can be your collocation, actually, all three words. Quality education, higher quality education. That's your chunk. That's what you want to be learning when you speak out. Reliable public transport. So public transport, collocation. Private transport, also. Um, access to culture, right? Instead of saying, well, more culture. Hmm, OK, access to culture. Better. Better access to culture. Um, right? You can expand it. Other things you may say, high level of convenience, right? Variety of shopping outlets, <laughs> shopping outlets or shopping malls, you can say, right? That's another common one. Entertainment facilities we could talk about. Let's bring all of these up, actually. Put them all together. Entertainment facilities, better standard of living, standard of living, great collocation, right? It's the quality of your life basically let's have a look um, we've got so Shad says living in the cities have better job opportunities perfect perfect um, great Eagle fly thanks for your comment that's lovely ease of transportation that's nice so reliable or ease of transportation very very nice uh, Emmy, hello, Emmy, long time no see. Better job opportunities, mass transportation system, meeting several new people, vast entertainment options, top of the line shopping and restaurants, best medical services possible. Yeah, all of those are very possible um, collocations. Nice. 
Public transportation, public transport is okay. Public transportation, yep. Healthcare, better healthcare, right? Um, what else? Anything else? Safe and secure environment, yeah. Safe environment is nice. Safe and secure, safe and secure environment. Yes, you could say that. I think we talk about safe environment generally, but that's still okay. Um, <laughs> better health facilities. I like that. Better health facilities. Yes. In fact, that's not on my list. Let's put that on. Better health facilities. So facilities, again, hospitals and so on. Anything else? Human, yeah, better quality of public utilities. Better quality public utilities. Hey, utilities. So the public utilities can be, for example, I don't know, like the rubbish clearing system. Uh, it can be the hospitals, it can be the, I was going to say the banks, depends on the country if it's a public system or not. Um, but general, yeah, healthcare can depends on the country, but often that's a public facility, right, or public utility. The water supply, the gas, the electricity, yeah, all of those. Lovely, excellent, good. Human, thank you very, very much. Nice. Okay, so advantages of living in a city. We've got lots of stuff here. Let's see, anything else? Great, modern conveniences we've got. That's a nice, nice one, especially for cities, right? The fact that you can walk out of your flat straight down into a shopping mall and buy everything and then go for a coffee in the local cafeteria, nice. Um, cultural diversity, interesting, yes, nice, very, very nice. More privacy, maybe. You, that's interesting. Maybe in the city, yes. Easy access to amenities. That's nice, lovely. Lem, let me just help you there. You're just missing a preposition to access. It depends, right? But here, because you're talking about the, the noun, it's access to something. As a verb, access something. But as a noun, I have access to something. So easy access to amenities, right? Nice, lovely, very, very good. Excellent. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's switch for a moment because we've been looking at advantages in the city. Um, of course, what we're going to look at as well as the advantages are the disadvantages, the cons, right? So let me ask you guys, what are the disadvantages of living in a city? What are the disadvantages? Um, I'm going to let you write down in the comments the cons or the disadvantages, the drawbacks, the negatives, the negative points, the downsides of living in a city. Write down in the comments and let's um, share some of your comments, right? And I'm going to put in some nice music just to relax us in here, right? <laughs> Traffic jams. Polluted air, high prices, lovely collocations by the way, heavy traffic, nice. Rubbish, <laughs> yes. Noise pollution, great collocation. Needy, nice, very, very nice, I like it. Poor air quality or of course air pollution, lovely. Double L by the way. <laughs> Paula, noise and air pollution, both of those. And light pollution as well, right? Too many strong lights. <clears throat> High cost of living, nice. Yeah, Pradeep, we'd normally say cost of living, not the price. High cost of living. Um, that would be the best collocation, right? I know what you're thinking, but I would stick with cost of living, yeah. Claudia, loneliness, right? To be alone, even though you're in a big city, you can be very lonely. Yeah. 
Traffic jams. Good, good. Anything else? Hard to find cosy places. Cavit, that's lovely. Very nice. Like it. Like it. <clears throat> so looking at negatives here, right? Environmental pollution. Yeah. This is nice, Tonya. I, it's not nice, of course. It's very, very bad. I mean, your comment is nice. <laughs> High rates of crime. Yeah. Good. Or social relationships. Okay. Nice. Overpopulated. Is that a red London bus? No, can't see what it is. <clears throat> or overcrowding, all of those, great, good. Okay, I think we've got the main idea. We've all got similar ideas. We've picked out the main things, right? High food price. So, let me switch. Before we fall asleep with that, mu mu that lovely music, but it's quite tranquil, right? <laughs> You're all falling asleep. Okay, lovely. Um, so let's just recap disadvantages of living in a city. We've got traffic congestion. Remember, focus on the collocation. I'll, I'll, I'll mention something else in a moment. Or traffic jams, right? Traffic jams. Pollution. Air pollution. Noise pollution. Traffic pollution. Water pollution. Uh, we've even got light pollution. Oh, I realise why it's doing that. I've got the wrong keyboard. Huh. Light pollution. Great. Overcrowding. Um, you can call it overpopulation. Overpopulated. Overpopulated. Populated. That was just... I'm going to make that clear because overcrowding is a noun. Just make sure you're clear on your nouns and adjectives. Overpopulated. Um, dense population, right? Too many people, dense population. Growth of slums, okay. Let's put all these here. Um, high rate of unemployment. Because although there are lots of job opportunities, because the competition is so high you've got a high rate of unemployment so you've got high um, rate of competition for jobs and therefore high rate of unemployment high cost of living that would be the nice collocation wealth inequality you often get yes um, anything else Growing gap, gap, okay, this is a similar thing, but the growing gap or disparity, so the, that's the gap or the disparity between the rich and the poor. And I've got a last one here, high levels of stress. <laughs> high levels of stress. There was something else somebody mentioned. I'm trying to pick it out. We had pollution, congestion. I think, okay, those seem to be the main ones. This, yeah, some it's concrete. This is a nice one, actually. Uh, we need the concrete jungle. So this again, metaphors are very, very nice because we talk about the concrete jungle. The city is a concrete jungle. Um, and what it means, of course, is that there's, there are no clo co <laughs> as somebody said, no cozy places. Right, everything's so cold and not friendly and warm um, and similarly so on that idea of metaphor the city is a concrete jungle you get stuck in the rat race I mean that's talking about employment but the idea of working nine to five every day and you're stuck in this boring routine we, we say you're stuck in the rat race the idea is a bit like the rat going around or the hamster you know the wheel that goes round and the rat goes and he goes round and round and round and round and he's stuck on this wheel, right? Um, you're stuck in the rat race and that can happen when you're working in the same job for 30 years, nine to five, every day. Oh my, oh my, stuck in the rat race. <laughs> um, so yes, look at the collocations, concrete jungle, um, high levels of stress, uh, cost of living, rate of unemployment, 
Ah, rate of crime. That was the other one. High rate of crime. High crime rate. The high rate of crime. There's a high crime rate. Our crime rate is very high. I'm, I'm tempted to say, actually, that we would tend to say the crime rate is very high. I think that just sounds a bit more natural. Rather than the rate of crime, the crime rate sounds a bit more natural. I think they're both okay. Um, dense population is another collocation. All of the pollutions are collocations. Traffic congestion, traffic jams. Okay. So you're kind of picking out the collocations here as you talk. So, and I'm just going to go back, right? We, we talked earlier about creating ideas that take one idea like pollution and then branch out. So the, disad, um, the disadvantage of living in a city is there's lots more pollution, right? So, for example, you get the... Uh, because of the, there are more and more traffic jams, there are more and more cars on the street, then the noise pollution and the air pollution just gets worse and worse. And it's something that's really hard to tackle. Um, on top of that, you've got light pollution because there are so many bright lights around the city um, that it's impossible to see the stars at night and makes it very hard to connect with nature. So you're, you're taking your core idea, branching out some examples and developing, right? I'm going to call that the branching out method. <laughs> there we go. Patent that, Keith. Yes, the branching out method. Let's remember that. <laughs> remember to create ideas. Use the branching out method. So you've got one idea, then branch out, giving more details. <laughs> I love that. So there you go. I've just created a whole new pedagogical methodology. It's called the branching out method. And it helps you create ideas in IELTS speaking. You take one main idea, then break, branch out, giving more details. The branching out method. Love it. OK. <laughs> Let's move on. We've talked so much about so many different things, right? We've talked about the pros and cons. What comes next? I don't know. What does come next? Oh, visualization. OK. Now, for some of you, this is going to be really, really strange, but other people might really like it. OK. <clears throat> so um, what we're going to do. <laughs> Pradeep, thank you for that. I love it. Pradeep says branching methods created by Keith on our <laughs> speaking. Ta -da! Lovely. BB says, I love your accent. Really? Thank you so much. You know, although I'm from Manchester, I don't have a Manchester accent because I've kind of travelled around the world for so many years. Um, I've lived right outside of England more years than I have in England. I left England when I was 20, 21. I left England when I was 21. And then, yeah, so since 21 up until now, and I'm 50. Four, I think. Am I 54 or 55? It's the problem as you get older. Your memory gets worse and worse. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that's why my accent is a bit, I don't know. And I guess being a teacher, you kind of, sometimes you modify your accent a little bit to make it easier to understand, which is slightly true, a little bit. <laughs> okay. Good. Your speed for speaking is good. Great. Pleased to hear that. Now then, visualization. Okay, let's talk about this. So this is what we're going to do. Um, I'll show you over here. Ba -bum, ba -bum, bum -bum. So with the visualization, all I want you to do, right, imagine it's a meditation. If any of you have practiced yoga or meditating, this is similar, but you learn English at the same time. Hmm. I'm going to ask you to relax. Right, relax your shoulders, 
relax. You should be sitting, but sit up straight, right? Don't, don't like that. Sit up straight, relax your shoulders, relax your neck, right? Um, relax your face. And then I want you to listen carefully and then close your eyes and follow my voice. Follow my instructions. You're going to just listen and you'll be listening to English about cities. You'll be learning vocabulary, but you just learn by absorbing. But the most important thing is this is just three minutes where you relax. You forget the stress. You forget the pollution. You forget the traffic jams. You forget the heavy study. And we relax and learn English in a very relaxing way. So let's have a look. Paola says, I meditate daily. Excellent. It's a great practice. Lovely. Mamta, love your way of teaching. Thank you so much. Great. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. If you're ready, let me turn up the volume a little bit. And then let's do the visualization. Ready? Let's go. Let's relax and let's begin. Imagine suddenly you are slap bang in the middle of a city, but your eyes are closed. What can you hear? Before we begin our journey around this city, I think we should take the chance to close our eyes and relax, to breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Relax and notice your breath entering and leaving you. Roll your shoulders a couple of times and roll your head clockwise and now roll your head anti-clockwise and again one more time. Now Without opening your eyes, but in your mind, look around you. You're standing in the street, well, on the pavement, not in the middle of the street. It's a city you have never been to before. As you look around at the buildings, a mix of houses, flats and skyscrapers, you can guess it's located in Europe most likely the north of Europe. The climate is cool and the overcast sky tells you that it rains quite a lot here. You decide to cross the street. You look right and then left and then cross. There are not too many cars at this time of day. It's mid-morning, little congestion, little pollution, little traffic. The rush hour is over and most people are at work, stuck in their offices, in those tall skyscrapers. How lucky you are to be outside, free from the daily grind of work and routine. The few cars that pass by are really nice cars, Audis, Mercedes-Benz, it seems that you are in an affluent neighbourhood. Or maybe the whole city has a high standard of living. There are metro entrances, car parks and a variety of shopping outlets on this street. This must be close to the city centre. As you cross the street, you notice there are a lot of hotels here too. This city must rely a lot on tourism, a place that attracts plenty of holidaymakers. And then, suddenly, you see an appealing building in front of you, a tall structure 
with an old-fashioned facade made of red brick. It looks quite posh. What do you think it is? Do you want to go inside? Come on, let's venture inside. The entrance has an impressive atrium with a high ceiling and lots of bright light shining in. You can hear the echo of people's voices, the click-clack of shoes hitting the tiled floor. What else can you hear? And then, of course, it dawns on you. You realise this is a museum. It's so peaceful. You stroll into one of the exhibition rooms. You feel relaxed, at ease. There's hardly anyone here. You can stroll around slowly, take in a few paintings without any hassle. It's so nice to see the creativity and inspiration dotted on the walls. You breathe deeply. After a short while, we decide to leave the museum and walk back out onto the street. You calmly go down some quiet back streets and look, there's a small coffee bar on one corner. A small cafe tucked away off the beaten track. You can see the soft lights inside and hear gentle jazz music coming out of the window. Let's pop inside and have a rest. Take off your coat, sit down and relax in the comfy sofa. You are super relaxed and can smell the soft aroma of coffee in the air. But I'm afraid it's time to leave the cafe and this wonderful city. After I count to three, you will come back to the classroom or wherever you are now. Ready? One, two, and three. Open your eyes and welcome back. Ugh. Ugh. <clears throat> I hope you didn't fall asleep. <laughs> that is a visualization. It's a lovely way to relax and to learn English at the same time. And it's a visualization all about cities, right? Great. Okay, good visualizations. I do enjoy them. Um, I learned these early on in my teaching career and I found them so powerful, really nice and fun. Let's see how you feel. Chow says, I feel is good. Jenny, that's fun. Yosra, wow, that was amazing. Great. <laughs> I'm still in the cafe. Yeah, I know. I know the feeling. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I don't want to come back. Esmael, that was fantastic. Peria, same here. I don't want to leave the cafe. Muslim taking a nap. That's okay. That's okay. Amazing. Great. Nulufar, perfect. Good. Okay. Um, Domenico, it nearly lulled you to sleep. Well, listen, it's time to wake up because after that very relaxing moment, we're going to move from relaxing to fun because... After the visualization, we're going to have a look at, we've got a game. We're going to finish up with the game of Kahoot, which is a way to review, wake up and review the language that we have learned so far. Let's find out if you have been awake or have you been napping, sleeping, kipping, having a siesta, dozing, nodding off. 
I hope you've been awake. How does Kahoot work? So what you need to do, right, I'll explain if you're new, if I can find the link to Kahoot, it's here, yes. You need to go to www.kahoot.it and there, in a moment, you just need to put your name and then the code or the pin, which I will give you, and then I'm going to ask you some questions and you choose an answer. There's A, B, C or D. And according to the correct answer, and then let's see if you can get the correct answer, basically. So listen, let me set that up. We'll get Kahoot going. Um, don't worry if you can't log in. Sometimes people can't, but it's fine. You can put your answer in the chat below. That's fine as well. But if you can, then you can get into Kahoot. Um, you basically need both. Here we go. You need both the website and me. You need to watch me at the same time. Listen, there's the pin right at the top. It's 825-9108. Um, if Burns and Mehdi and Paula, if you could share the pin in the chat as well, just to let people know, then that's great. Um, just put in your name put in the pin and then come back to the main screen, right? So you can see the results, right? I'll just give you a few moments to get loaded up and to get going. Amy, I love your comment. I'm such a nerd. I made notes in the visualization or in the whole class. That's great. Well done. Okay, just give you a moment to join in. Great. Good to see that Burns and everybody else, you're in there as well. Right, we've got about 100 people in. That, oh, a few more still coming. Okay, I'll just give you a few seconds. Dun, 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 dun. It's catchy, that music, right? Really catchy. It's going to be stuck in your head the whole day. OK, so once you've logged in, um, you can come to the main screen. That's the obviously the main screen here with me. Um, you'll see the question and the options, the answers. Choose your answer and then we'll look at the results. OK, all right, let's begin, guys. Let's start with the first question. I know you're still coming in, but just to save on time, if you can't get in, just put your answer in the chat below. OK. Let's start. Whoops. <laughs> Cities. Hanoi is blank the north of Vietnam. To, at, in, on. Hanoi is blank the north of Vietnam. To, at, in, or on. You've got 30 seconds to get your answer. Oh, that's interesting. 50 of you got the right answer. It's in the north of Vietnam. I understand a lot of you put two, right? Um, but remember, two is the direction, which means it would be outside of Vietnam. It would be north of Vietnam. It would be outside in another country. So here it's in the space, in the north of Vietnam. OK, not bad. Let's see. The scoreboard. Proud Army got the right answer and you were the fastest. Lucas was second. Eight, eight, two, five, nine, one, oh, eight. Is that your phone number? Number three. Um, and Ima and Pradeep were four and five. Let's move on. Question number two. Visitors are 
blank by the beaches. Visitors are blank by the beaches. Drawing, drawn, drew, painted. What do you think? You've got 10 seconds left. Whoa, that is much, much, much better. Visitors are drawn by the beaches, meaning they are attracted, right? Past participle, drawn. Well done, those 80. Let's see how the podium goes. Proud Army is still up at the top. I'm a GSP, <laughs> came in second. Oh, look at that. We've got urbanization coming in fourth and tiring Mondays in fifth. Question number three. New office blocks have cropped blank everywhere in the city centre. Away, up, out or down. New office blocks have cropped blank everywhere in the city centre. Away, up, out or down. April, well done. Mehdi, well done. I can see your answers. Russian with Par Russian with Parisa, great. Well done. Ali, well done. Up again. Vast majority have the right answer. Well done. Cropped up. You can also say, um, uh, what else was the other one? Popped up. <laughs> Cropped up. Excellent. Good. On the podium. Proud Army, oh, has been overtaken. We've got urbanization has stolen first place. Um, 825, second. Lin Chi is in third. Funny Keith is in fourth. And Tung Duong is in fifth place. Last question. One downside is the growth of blank in the outskirts of the city. Slums, slams, slims or slips. Talking about the downside of urbanization. So one downside is the growth of blank in the outskirts of the city. Slum, slam, slims or slips. Henry, be careful. Messe, well done. Richmond, be careful. Satak, well done. Yeah, it was the slums, right? With a U. Slums are these poor and dirty areas that grow on the outskirts of the city. Excellent. That was the fourth and last question. So the question now is, who is the leader? Here's the podium. Third place. Lincher, well done. Second. 8259108. First. Urbanization, which is very appropriate for this topic, urbanization. Ah, oh, lovely. I love it. Well done, guys. Um, congratulations. Whoever you are, urbanization, you deserve to be first. Lovely. Very, very nice. Enjoy it. Great. Thank you very much. So, Guys, let me just recap what we have been doing today, right? Um, we've been looking at cities. What you, I hope you've learned today is to talk about location, if where places are, right? You can say it is located in the north of England or it can be found in the north of Vietnam, for example. We've talked about attractions, the tourists flock to the museums or the beaches are a big pull factor, other expressions like that. We've talked about urbanization, um, this influx of people to a city and the pros and cons, right? The great things about better job opportunities, about higher quality education, these collocations and the cons, of course, the air pollution, the traffic jams the whatever else came up there, right? Pros and cons. And we discovered 
this new method, <laughs> the branching out method patented by Key Speaking Academy to get your idea over here and then branch out to talk in more detail about that main idea to help you develop ideas in IELTS speaking. Um, and then we've also had this visualization to help you relax and just learn English in a very simple way. You can go back and listen to that. And of course the game, just to make sure you're asleep. You're not asleep. That's it. That brings us to the end of today's session. Listen, I hope you've enjoyed the session today. Um, if you've liked this and you want to get more resources to help you, do go and check out the Keith Speaking Academy. Um, I'll just show you very, very briefly what it's all about. It's the website and it's over here. <laughs> Can I show you this? I can't show you this. Why can't I show you this? Let me try over here. OK, um, this is the Keith Speaking Academy. You can go and check it out. There are different resources here. If you come down, da, 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 da. Um, you can find out information about the test, the format, the evaluation, about the different parts of the test, the common topics you've got. Um, if you want to get free live lessons, this is what you're watching today. Um, later today, we'll upload. You can get the PDF from today's notes. Um, if you want to watch past free live lessons, we've got all the lessons here you can access for free on all the topics health and fitness environment family friends every all the common topics right in IELTS speaking they're all here you can go and check them out um, and if you're interested in online courses you can join the courses here I've got my gold course here um, there's a reading course from my friend Fiona and also a writing course from Eli if you're interested um, if you want to look at the Fluent Grammar course, there's the Band 7 Plus course, there's the library. And if you've enjoyed the visualization today, right, you can join the library, which gives you six visualizations, um, as well as the different pronunciation files to help practice your pronunciation. Um, you can go there, you can see what's in there. It's quite fun, right, visualizations. You can get those in the library, but you can go and check out all the courses from the the website they're there all the information you need in the top corner and if you're unsure you can just email me and ask me and the team so listen thank you so much for joining me i hope you've enjoyed the lesson um, and that it's been fun do remember these live lessons are the first thursday of every month right so if you want to join us it's once a month the first thursday 10 a.m spain time so the next one, when is the next one? The next one, I'll tell you when the next one is. It's going to be on the, oof, I've got too many things going on. It's going to be on the 4th of August, right? That will be the next class, the 4th of August, the next live lesson. If you want more live lessons, come and join us in the gold course, because in the gold course, we have more live lessons um, on the second and the third of the week. And you can join us and find out there more practice. That's on the speaking success gold course lots of stuff happening there as well again go to the website you can get more details that's it thank you so much for joining me it's been great fun um i'm enjoying my new space although it's a bit hot i need to sort that out thank you so much for joining me guys take care and i will see you very very soon all the best bye bye now Take care. Bye-bye.